How me talk if he die on a hippie? I'm be too kill me chante at the oak lock in a hana pictures up at all. Ho he charge me tower warm nisha gay, doba ima chapi. Ushimala omakia na gna gupta. Naha, I'm be too kill naha chante project are doing this film or, or this little podcast or whatever you want to call it uh, for the sake of sharing information about our cultural way of life uh, Nina Wananga, Sharlila Hehani a long time ago eh? and uh, just to help us understand the importance of uh, what it means to live in a contemporary life and still try to maintain some sense of dignity and honor to sustain that integrity that our, our cultural value system uh, used to be uh, held to. You know, it, it's important that um, a lot of the stories from long ago are kind of listened to and then you learn from that and then you can apply some of that uh, character development to your growth, not only for the sake of yourself and your representation of yourself, but representation of your family, your tribe and indigenous people all over the world. As we do these things, we understand the importance of uh, some of these stories. One of the stories that uh, were shared with me uh, at an early time, because uh, we spent a lot of time over there on the tomato can and over that way, uh, west of uh, Fraser, northwest of Fraser, and up by the air base and stuff like that. And because there were good fasting places, Hamblechak, that. And so the, the, our relatives used to go up there and cry all night for a vision. And we'd had vision places. And so my uh, dad, Mato Pewaka, also known as uh, Max White, shared that story of Rocky Point with me. And he showed me where it was at. And he said, this is a very um, spiritually powerful place. And then he went on to, to share with me as to why. And so of course, Rocky Point, as we know it, is a, uh, a place where there was a cave inside this hill. And uh, uh, the Assiniboine people, long ago after they got involved with uh, the non-Indian relatives, uh, acquired this disease that they called smallpox. At some point in time, we didn't fully understand if it was uh, intentionally shared or whatnot, but it, uh, evidently there was a uh, an epidemic of uh, smallpox going on around and throughout Indian country. And of course there's stories about uh, it was in the Hudson Bay blankets that they were sharing with us and they inflicted that uh, disease on us. And, and people often wonder uh, uh, how that came about. Well, prior to our involvement with the non-Indian people, we were very, we still are a very clean people and we, we sustained our, our immune system in such a good way. Not, and not because uh, we took shots or any of our pills or anything. It's because of our diet. It's what we ate. And again, uh, I was, it was shared with me that um, if I ever had an opportunity to eat wild game, I should always eat wild game. Because in that, uh, whatever that, that wild game ate, would come inside my body and would act as a, an immune builder in my own system. And so I always do that. I always try to eat wild game, although I don't hunt, but I rely on others and they provide me with wild game. And one of the, the, the most important uh, meals was the buffalo uh, meat. And, and, and you can just about imagine uh, what the buffalo ate must have been good for our systems as it relates to immunity and things against uh, um, uh, a lot of these sicknesses that were going around. But we were so clean in the way that we lived that uh, we, we coexisted with all of uh, uh, God's creation. And so in that, there was always a spiritual way when a life was taken for the sake of our sustenance. And so tobacco was offered, prayers were offered because we had this uh, really uh, compatible uh, genuine coexistence with our, 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 our uh, non-human relatives, the four-legged, who, who, dopa, they called them. And uh, we, we, we'd uh, eat their meat, but we'd always let the spirit of that animal understand that they were providing for us in good way, and we always thanked them for those things. So 
when this disease of uh, smallpox came upon us as a Cinnaboyne people, the leadership at that time understood the white man brought it, but he wasn't going to save us because they felt it was intentional and they wanted to uh, help us uh, die off. They wanted to kill us off, so, and of course, uh, to take our land. But uh, with that understanding amongst the leadership, uh, uh, they had a discussion amongst themselves that the, the Nacha, that the Itancha, the Hunga, the chief, and all of those leaders of various uh, clans of, of, of uh, the relatives got together and they decided, well, as soon as we find out if we uh, get, a, get the disease, we'll take ourselves and get away from the tribe. You know, and back in the day, under this natural law process, uh, how they controlled this tribal concept or this communal way of living was, um, you never did an unnatural act against anybody. One of the worst things you could do was kill your own tribal member, and then they would uh, kick you out of the tribe, they'd ostracize you from the tribe. Because back then, there was power in numbers. And so that's why we stuck together. But if you did something against the nature of another person, not necessarily stealing, because then we had what they call uh, reparative justice. You'd go cut wood for them if you stole from them, or you'd replace that, or if you took one of their horses, and then you'd go get them two horses or something, that's reparative justice. But if you did a serious crime, like uh, say, abuse a child in any way, murder somebody, or uh, hurt somebody badly and, and take take away their, their ability to function, they would ostracize you out of the tribe. And if that ever happened, what that meant was um, sure death, because you couldn't live on your own. Some people would say, have stories about, well, this guy did that, ah, no, no. Uh, usually they, they ended up dying because they, that's the dependency they had. And then based on that, they, they would continue to survive and that's how they controlled that com communal st style of living. So anyway, well, at Rocky Point there's a cave up there and uh, these people that got afflicted with uh, the uh, smallpox, they adorned themselves in their finest regalia, the beadwork or whatever they felt was uh, a good piece of thing. They, they put it on, they wore it. They wanted to show the Creator that we're ready to go, we're not afraid what we're going to go up there and so we're going to take ourselves for the sake of the greater good to protect the majority of the tribe from them because they understood it was past close and within closed uh, uh, living like that so they took themselves out and so they went up to this cave and they went in there and they prayed and they prayed and they prayed until of course of the, their demise so when they died that's where they were at. And I guess there was a few people in there and then after time went on, uh, white people found out about it, sad to say. And so what they did was they went in that cave and they stole a lot of the, the items that were there, the pipes and the, some of the artifacts and the beadwork and the necklaces and stuff like that. Things that were important to that particular individual. I really don't know the numbers of the people that were in there, but there was a few. There was there, there was a few people that went in there and, and just sat in there and died until they starved to death or whatever. And again, that was for the sake of the greater good, the rest of the tribe, so they wouldn't be affected, inf infected uh, of the smallpox, and that's how they dealt with it. You know, and that has a lot of um, um, really meaning now because of this COVID-19 that's going around. You know, our houses became Rocky Point. They told us to go back and, and stay in our house and don't go nowhere. And, and But those folks, they did that because, again, if you understand the, the spiritual way of our life is we don't fear death. We prepare for it. And so there was no reason for them to be afraid of it at that time long ago. And so they went there and they said, okay, I'm infected with this disease i don't want to affect infect anybody else so i'll just do this because we're all going to die anyway but uh, this is the way i choose to do it for the sake of the rest of the tribe and in that that's that's a very beautiful thought in our own minds uh, you know a lot of people they have uh, uh, 
I would say, a lack of faith, if you will, in respects to um, approaching death when they get afraid of it, as opposed to the way we believe, is we prepare for it, knowing that we're all going to die someday. And so then everybody worries about themselves in respects to suicide or somebody being killed by a car wreck and, and you hear them, of course you're going to mourn them. Chante yoksi omani, of course the, we can understand that. But there's a way to address that as well. And we have ceremony that, that helps us to accept that mourning, that, that, that sad heart that we carry. And, and we address it in a, in a good way as, as a family, as a tribal people. We, we do those things. But that needs to come back. You know, like uh, I was talking in a sweat the other day, I said there's a hundred thousand people that have gone to the other side. We should be jealous of those hundred thousand. And people kind of looked at me in a different way, but they didn't understand my thought process was that we should be jealous of them because they're already there. We're still waiting to go over there someday soon. And that's where the term, I shall see you again. That's where that term comes from. And that's what we mean when we go south. That's where we'll meet our relatives again. So Rocky Point is, is very um, important as it relates to a story. Understanding the, how our people thought at that time, during those times which uh, uh, were still not really contaminated by colonialism or, or the white man, but they still maintained their language, their cultural value system, their understanding of this natural law and how they prepared for this mystery of death. And then with this indoctrinated dogmatic approach in which they pushed on us, they made us afraid of death. And so then they controlled us by that fear. And so, but the, the, it, it becomes a very deeper thought process when you go there. But Rocky Point is something that's significant. It's something that should be shared and told, uh, especially uh, dealing with those individuals that uh, are having a hard time addressing suicide, eh? And uh, just wanted to share that about Rocky Point. I'm sure that others will have a, if you wanna find out the numbers of people in that cave, I'm sure you can research it and find out how many did actually do that. But I, there was a considerable amount from what I understand. And uh, they didn't wanna deplete the tribe and, and infect the rest. So in a very humble way, with the strength and the faith that they had that was instilled in them, from our value system, they took themselves out. Ho, mitake oasi.